Hello learners, welcome to NIOS Senior Secondary Biology course. I am Dr. Babita Kaula, Associate Professor, Department of Botany, Zakir Suen Delhi College, University of Delhi. We have discussed so far about cellular respiration. Now in this part we shall be discussing the following objectives that is to understand the factors that affect the rate of respiration and also what is respiratory quotient and its value for different food items. We will also understand pentose phosphate pathway that is triple P which is a special feature of microbes that is bacteria and fungi and uh, as well as the cells which are highly active in these this particular pathway takes place. The rate of respiration is affected by several internal factors which can be minerals, it can be the structure of the uh, organ or uh, the tissue in which respiration takes place, the activity of the enzymes that are involved in the respiratory pathways and also the type of substrate that is used to generate energy in this respiratory pathway. The external factors include as you all know external factors are like water, temperature, uh, air and uh, of course in air it is essentially oxygen. And the type of substrate that is utilized also gives us an idea what how efficient the substrate is in terms of releasing energy. So this is calculated by respiratory quotient. So what is respiratory quotient? It is the volume of carbon dioxide evolved to the volume of oxygen consumed. Now the volume of carbon dioxide evolved essentially means respiration and the volume of oxygen consumed essentially means photosynthesis. So this value has been calculated for different substrates. For carbohydrates this RQ is 1 and for proteins it is less than 1 and proteins which are uh, you know you know pulses uh, seeds like seeds which are like uh, rich in proteins their respiratory quotient is less than 1. For fats the respiratory quotient is more than 1. Fats are present in uh, oil containing seeds and essentially here I would like to mention that RQ of fats is less than 1 which means the energy produced per molecule of fat is more than the energy produced by the metabolization of one molecule of glucose. The factors that affect external factors that affect the rate of respiration are temperature. We all know that temperatures between 30 to 35 are most um, you know uh, desirable for the functioning of enzymes. So these are the ranges in which respiration works the best. Below this uh, above this range when the temperature goes above uh, 50 the respiratory enzymes go haywire and also when the temperature drops below 0 and uh, again the same uh, problem happens to the enzymes that they are not able to function efficiently. So they uh, hugely hamper the process of respiration. Uh, coming to oxygen, as the rate of oxygen the rate of respiration increases when there is a increase in the rate in the concentration of oxygen. However, if it increases beyond a limit, the rate of respiration will not definitely grow um, on increasing. There is a limit to this beyond which it will fall. Carbon dioxide, this factor, uh, the rate of respiration is dependent on uh, if the carbon dioxide gas accumulates in the tissue, the rate of respiration is definitely going to fall. Water is another important factor where uh, respiration is dependent on water. If the protoplasm which is which mostly contains water content in it, if the content of water falls in the protoplasm, the rate of respiration is going to fall. This has an advantage. We are able to store the seeds for a long time. The reason is that they have a very low moisture content. So they remain dormant but however dormancy does not mean that they have died when you supply water um, is resumed, water supply is resumed, when you soak the seeds the respiration is again resumed and they start uh, germinating. So uh, in a way this is also a way method by which seeds can be stored. Now another part of uh, essential part of respiration is photorespiration as the name itself signifies that photorespiration is the respiration that takes place in the presence of light and in addition to this it, uh, in, uh, it generally works when there is high concentration high levels of oxygen and low levels of carbon dioxide. So Rubisco is an enzyme which works when uh, 
this enzyme has active site which uh, uh, has affinity for both carbon dioxide and oxygen. So depending on what is available in the environment, Rubisco will accordingly work. If uh, photorespiration has to happen, then obviously as I said, there will be high levels of oxygen and low levels of carbon dioxide. So Rubisco will activate the reaction between ribulose bisphosphate and oxygen giving rise to phosphoglyceric acid and phosphoglycolate. This phosphoglycolate is further metabolized in mitochondria and in peroxisomes and uh, in this process there are no ATPs formed unlike respiration which produces a large number of ATPs. Now uh, oxygenation of uh, ribulose bisphosphate in the presence of oxygen also leads to the loss of carbon dioxide which normally fixed by the plants in dark reaction. Now photorespiration has an advantage that uh, when uh, sometimes excess of light damages the plants. So when photorespiration happens, it protects the plant from photooxidative damage by utilizing that excess light and which would otherwise normally damage the pigments of the plant. Now yet another pathway of uh, respiration is known as pentose phosphate pathway or triple P and uh, this is also known as hexose monophosphate shunt pathway or direct oxidation of glucose pathway. In this pathway, the site of respiratory pathway is cytosol. It does not require any electron transport chain or mitochondria. This is the most efficient respiratory pathway. In this pathway, pentose phosphate pathway, it almost parallels glycolysis and it generates NADPH and pentoses as well as it generates ribose 5-phosphate and this ribose 5-phosphate is a precursor for the synthesis of nucleotides and you know nucleotides are so essential for uh, the living beings. They are the ones which are the carriers of hereditary material. So these the precursors for their synthesis are provided by this as a byproduct of this particular pathway. Now uh, to sum up this uh, part, uh, I can say learners that we have discussed in this particular part the factors that are affecting rate of respiration. We have discussed what is respiratory quotient and we have discussed photorespiration and pentose phosphate pathway and of course yes you all will agree that we have understood that uh, respiration is dependent on various factors and uh, these factors are the ones that control the rate of respiration depending on whatever is operative at that particular time. The amount of energy released in respiration is dependent on the substrate. What does that mean? That means the substance that we eat. If we are eating fats, we are bound to have more energy compared to uh, non-fatty foods. And, uh, uh, and as I already mentioned that uh, in pentose phosphate pathway, which is the most uh, efficient respiratory pathway, in addition to NADPH, it releases precursors for the synthesis of nucleotides. Thank you.